right, welcome back, Culture Cast. This is episode nine. Uh, I was I made sure last time to have the episode. It's episode nine. All right, I made sure last time, and this time I didn't. But it's nine. Uh, thank you, Don, for uh, showing up. Aside from the you know one thing, another chill week, more USA Showcase stuff going on. Um, but what we're gonna start off with is pretty crazy. It's the first time I've seen a call out like this from any player to management uh, since I've been watching basketball. Uh, James Harden uh, holds a press conference uh, claiming Daryl Morey is a liar and that he will never play a game for him again. Um, There's a lot of stuff to get into the relevancy of that uh, through the James Harden arc, um, which we'll get into. Following that, we're going to briefly talk about uh, Cooper Flag reclassifying, as Dominic brought up. Uh, Cooper Flag is potentially uh, the next big thing uh, in the coming draft uh, or the draft after this coming draft. Uh, a lot of the pro-am stuff we've been seeing Cooper flag has kind of been heavily a part of uh, stuff. I haven't quite checked out, um, but we are going to talk a little bit about a few teams that could be in the mix for a guy like Cooper flag um, when that day comes for, for him getting drafted. Uh, following that, we're going to go over the in-season tournament for the Western Group C, which is Dominic's team, the Oklahoma City Thunder, and uh, the Warriors, which is the team I follow. And following that, briefly talking about Jamal Murray being out for Team Canada uh, just to prepare for the upcoming season. And then following that, USA versus Greece, Canada losing to the Dominican Republic, and then USA versus Germany. Starting off today with the crazy James Harden news, Uh, like I said, and I will be linking the video in the description of what happened uh, for you guys to watch for yourselves. Uh, James Harden holds a press conference claiming Daryl Morey is a liar and that he will never play a game for him again. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, Daryl Morey has kind of been around James Harden's career since his Houston days. Uh, Daryl Morey, famous for saying the Houston Rockets of the Chris Paul, James Harden era were built to beat the Warriors. Uh, Daryl Morey has been at the helm with Mike D'Antoni and kind of creating that uh, first full on five out spread offense for James Harden to just go on pick and roll. ISO one on five, every game. Um, Daryl Morey then after Houston uh, went on to work with the 76ers. I don't think he's the GM. Uh, but he has some role in the front office uh, as a higher up. And after James Harden got traded to the Nets uh, in the 2021 season uh, or 2020, 2021 season, James Harden uh, got traded again the next season to the 76ers to team up with Joel Embiid and to get back to Daryl Morey. And now after making the playoffs twice now with Philly, James Harden has apparently said that Maury is a liar and he will never play a game for him again. What do you think about this? This is the first time I've seen anything like this uh, with, you know, beef with the front office. Yeah. Thoughts. I mean, I I saw the frustration and I guess it's based on him complaining about not receiving the contract that he thought he was going to get at the end or during the season, like an extension, I guess. Hmm. Or something to do with that. And he was expected to get a contract that he was not given. Because he took a pay cut last year. Right. Play again, and I guess he was expecting an extension that Maury said he would get. And I guess his frustration is based on that. Hmm. It's, something, it's something to do with an extension and him not receiving it. So that's what the frustration is about. Well, that's... I don't know. I don't... Okay. If, if that's the case, I hold little respect there. <laughs> it's like... I, I, we talked about this before too. It's like, you know, if you want to win, you got to sacrifice a bit. Yeah. Um, you know, Philly was lacking uh, going into uh, going into the playoffs guys, you know, you need more and Harden, Harden doing that at this point in his career is um, I, I, that's tough to see, but I'm trying to find it right now, but it was supposedly based on, just, I guess, something to do with him not getting the contract that he thought he was going to get. Hmm. 
and it that's is, interesting though i mean like my initial guess was he just like he wanted to go to philly because he thought philly was going to be the easiest path to a ring it yeah. didn't work out and because of that he blamed maury and was like i don't want to play with you anymore this is twice now i've believed and it didn't work um, James Harden reportedly expected to receive a max contract from Daryl Morey in the Philadelphia 76ers per Eric at Eric Pincus. Whether Morey hmm. promised it or not, multiple sources indicated Harden was under the impression he would opt out and re-sign with Philadelphia on a max deal this summer. Oh, okay. And I guess it hasn't it hasn't come to fruition. So I guess that's what a big part of his anger is coming from, is that okay. And I well, that makes sense too, because I imagine that's one of the reasons why Philly probably wanted to trade him. Yeah, they're like, I don't want to pay you this anymore. Oh no, yeah, I don't. Um, I would love them really. Yeah, so uh, it makes sense. Um, yeah, I, for Harden, it's like, dude, you're 34. Yeah, your your best days are behind you. Come on. Yeah. Like, what do you don't do you want to win or what? I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, I think now it's kind of in a really awkward situation. I don't know if it, uh, I don't know what happens now. I, I imagine he holds out. I, I have no idea. Oh, yeah. We've seen it before. He's done it before. Like, I would I, imagine. Yeah, yeah. He did in Houston, but yeah. I, I imagine he holds out now and doesn't play. But yeah, I maybe have, that's not the case. Yeah. We'll have to see. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, all I hope is Philly doesn't cave in just like they did with Ben Simmons and give yeah. him the deal. Yeah. Um, I think if Philly holds strong and just, you know, fine, you don't want to play. We've been through this before. We'll do it again. Yeah. Um, I, you know, the worst thing at this point for James is it's like, uh, if Philly ain't giving you that and they need to win with the Embiid window, yeah. who the hell is going to give you that kind of money? <laughs> yeah. You're exactly. expecting a max at 34 yeah. years old. Come on, bro. Yeah. yeah it's not there right now. Yeah. Um that this is the have you ever seen anything like this in the modern era? I don't think like the most I've seen where it's like dissing the front office is like uh guys like just subtly kind of throwing shade, yeah. hoping for more, you know, you gotta put players on the floor to win, like that kind of stuff. I've never seen anything directly calling someone out. Man, I mean uh dude, this is a this is a weird one because yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anything really like it too much. Uh, yeah. Maybe like a LeBron in Cleveland with the the owner a few like a while ago. Hmm. He, he didn't say anything like that. Interesting. Dude, there's nothing really like that for like front office wise that I can think of. Yeah, it feels like a first. I dissing, was, like dissing the front office. Like, like straight up, like directly name calling. Yeah, yeah, you know. just put him on blast. Because it's not even like, uh, what's his name? Um, Donald, uh, Donald Sterling. Really? Yeah, yeah no, it's is, not even like that, where it's like, you know, oh, this yeah. dude's not only going to get kicked out of the league, but he's going to get yeah. banned. But, you know. Yeah, no, that, this is nothing, anything like that. That's yeah. yeah. This is just him just calling the dude out. Yeah, so, I, I mean... I, I first thing I imagine is Harden's going to get fined supremely oh, yeah. um, for doing this. I but think. second is I, like, does a team feel comfortable with something? Cause like, look, I mean, this is the nature of the business. It's like, you know, it wouldn't shock me if Philly didn't hold up their end of something. Cause yeah. I'm sure they went into it thinking we're going to get 25 and 10 from James Harden. We're going to get the, you know, just like a better version of what he was in Houston. Yeah. Because he said the hamstring's good, you yeah. know, and then that didn't happen. He folds in the playoffs again, you know, like Philly's like, sorry, dude, yeah. we'll go test the market. And he's like, fuck you then. I'm, yeah. I'm holding yeah. out. I, I don't know. I, I, I think maybe a few teams will call in, but as of right now, I have no idea what's going on there. Yeah. I think you brought up the Knicks last time uh, as a yeah. team. I, I, the only other team I could think of, and it's, it's totally just, baseless and no nothing goes behind it but i could see maybe a team like maybe miami if the dane tra- trade fall uh, like falls through that's maybe true want that scoring boost and, and to be fair he will be cheaper than he will be a cheaper buy than dame so yeah i mean hopefully shit yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> like, he'll have to, we'll be have to see yeah. what the price he's was from buy. i mean we got to see during the eight and rumors if like a month ago like the stuff they were asking for tobias harris it was yeah. like what on earth are you on 
Uh, so <laughs> they, they got some yeah. trades. I'll say that yeah, Philly, Philly really tries to up their price. Yeah, and it you know shockingly never works in their favor. They end up getting <laughs> scraps, you know. So <laughs> yeah, I I do like Miami as a spot too. I it's think so you know. Yeah, like it's, like we mentioned, they they have like a certain culture there. I don't know if he fits yeah, that he culture. Will. To be fair, yeah, I don't know if he'll he'll be a very good fit, but you never know because I like I, I watched the uh, it was Iguodala. It was like a clip of Iguodala mentioning how none of the players ever get in trouble in Miami because they have them on a leash there. Like they have them really yeah. ready to work, and that's all I know. Really, it seems like down there. So maybe, but at the same time, maybe his his behavior and such maybe he won't be a fit. Yeah, I don't know. that's the thing though. Is you go to a place Miami. The reason Miami works is because you buy in. Like yeah. when you go there, you don't go in there like, no, nah, I'm not doing this yeah. running stuff. That's a, they're they, they will drop you like a fly. Yeah, they like so fast. Uh, I so yeah, I you know, as far as like on the floor, could it work? I do think it, it would fit in Miami, especially yeah. because like even though Kyle Lowry played some great playoff basketball. He's, he's past up his up prime. There. Yeah, he's up um, there. Yeah. Gabe Vincent's a Laker. You um, know, Tyler Hero. You need yeah, you need yeah. Some, some production. And I imagine if they get Dame, if they get Harden, Tyler Hero is going to be the package guy. He's yeah. going to be the first to go. I'd imagine. So they need that playmaker and they need that scoring input. So um, on paper, I could see it working. But yeah, culture fit wise, it's just like that's, yeah, yeah he's anti Miami. <laughs> The polar opposite, but very much so. Yeah, the whole situation is just wild. I don't. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, yeah. I'm interesting. I'm interested in like where Philly goes from here. It's crazy to think this is like the second time in the last couple of years that this has happened to them. I know. Um, to an extent, I feel bad, but then again, it's like when they traded for these dudes, I was like, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, like, just like horrible culture guys. Just yeah, terrible. I know. <laughs> like. That was the big knock on Ben Simmons at LSU is it was like, he's just really not about the culture. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, I don't care. He's got the talent. Yeah. We'll mold him. It's like, Oh, boy, howdy. Did you not? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So I guess moving on from there, we'll uh, get into the Cooper flag uh, situation. Uh, Cooper flag is a big time recruit. Uh, his name has been, you know, surfacing, not even surfacing, but kind of dominating the the NBA airwaves yeah. for the last couple months, uh, especially since when Benyama's get uh, gotten drafted. Now, the, the scouting, week. you know, division within the NBA fan bases, you know, got their next guy that's going to be, you know, the, the next big thing. And that's Cooper Flag. Um, he has reclassified to the draft two years from now. Yeah. So, uh he seemed Dominic was talking about, uh, I, I well actually you could just get into it. You know, you, you briefly spoke on him um, cause I don't know much. So uh, you know, what do you see from Cooper flag as a player at the moment? Can you, get yeah, like a, see, you got a pretty solid two way guy, power forward six, eight, as of right now, I would imagine he keeps growing. I believe he's only 16 or 17. So okay. I imagine he probably gets a bit taller. He's already pretty well built. He's not very skinny. He's built pretty well. Mm. He, He's definitely a two-way guy, but definitely on the defensive end is where he earns his money. Very good in the passing lanes, very good shot blocker, protects the rim very well, obviously, and also seems to have very good switchability, very mm-hmm. athletic. He's very athletic, I would say, for being that big. The way he moves is pretty pretty solid. He can shoot, but then again, it's high school. I don't want to talk too much about his offense. Right. A lot of high school players can do a lot of stuff that probably won't translate to different levels of the game, but – he looks like the full package, but then again, it is high school. We'll have to wait and see. But I do think defensively he will be a very special player on that side of the ball. And that's pretty much all I would say. I don't think he's technically committed anywhere yet. But I remember I saw him visiting Duke, I believe it was, yeah. that he was at. So White guys in Duke. What's, you know, what's, <laughs> what's more Duke? of a you know, more of a combo than that, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love hearing about the defense because, you know, like you said, it's high school. It's hard to gauge these guys' offensive games because they're yeah. so much more advanced than other guys. Yeah. Um, especially, like you said, athletically. If he's already a big time power forward and he's built, yeah. like, you know, what is the fucking little, you know, 5'10 high schooler going to do against that? <laughs> um, but no, the defense, you can't teach defense. Like, 
that's one of the things, you know, everybody, it's, you know, when Binyama, everything, but you watch Scoot Henderson and it's like, man, he gets after it defensively. You respect yeah. that. Like he really wants it on that end. So, um, yeah, you know, to see that is, is always a nice thing. Um, I know we briefly talked about all the pro-am stuff that's been going on. Yeah. Uh, I think it was in New York that he's been playing. Cooper flag has been a part of a lot of pro-am stuff. Um, yeah. And, you know, like, like we were talking about, he's he, like, this is the Wembenyama phase where all yeah. the hype is now going to get yeah. directed to Cooper flag. So um, I'm going to have to start checking out some stuff there, but yeah, we had a couple teams down that potentially come this draft could be in the realm of landing him based off of where they're at now. Now we're not mentioning all the teams because I'm sure there's like, you know, anything's possible, right. For all we know, like, you know, I don't know. Phoenix will be there. Who knows? It's yeah, just, you never know. Two years in the NBA is a long time. So uh, at the moment we have down Portland, Chicago, the Clippers, and potentially the Raptors. Um, I guess we could start with Portland, you know, Scoot is the truth. I think everyone can kind of agree that like when we Russell Westbrook was like the epitome of athleticism meets playmaking. Yeah. Um, originally we like, that was Derek Rose, but obviously uh, unfortunate events occurred. Uh, Scoot looks like the truth. I imagine Anthony Simons at some point is probably going to get traded because Anthony Simons is an on the ball guy. Um, They've got pieces, and if Dame gets traded, they're going to have more pieces. Yes. Uh, so they're going to be kind of on the struggle bus in a very tight-knit Western Conference, which yeah. means in two years, they could be top pick, top three, potential landing spot for a Cooper flag. Uh, what do you think, you know, what do you think Portland is kind of, you know, what are your thoughts on that, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I don't really see too much promise there. You have a lot of young guys coming in. I mean, I don't think Nurkic is there. I don't think Dame's right. there much longer. I think all your your vets and the older guys that are helping you somewhat stay afloat, I guess I would say. They're not very good as of right now, but even though they could get worse, and I think they most likely will. I don't see the point of holding on to those guys. So, yeah, I very much agree that I think they'll be in that that struggle era in a few probably the next few years here, probably in the next few months. Cause I think a trade's coming through probably soon for those guys. Yeah. I imagine I, it would kind of shock me if they went into the season with Damian Lillard. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the bulls, we talked a lot about the bulls and kind of the place that they're in is a, you know, we want to win, but we're not good enough. Yeah. And like our piece away may not even be able to play basketball again. Yeah. Um, I guess, like, do you have any further thoughts on Chicago? Because I think we can both agree that they're probably going to be there. I think they um, blow it up this year. I think midseason comes. I think they're probably 11, 12, and I think they just they ship it off. I a lot think. of deadline stuff. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they can ever uh, – they can never remain healthy. Nothing ever goes their way. I, I just think they blow it up personally. Yeah, and, I, you know, honestly, I kind of like – we talked a lot about how it's probably the wrong idea to sign these guys. But yeah. I actually, at this point, am kind of pro signing them because the deadline is where teams kind of get desperate. Yeah. So where right now, you know, trying to do a sign and trade for a DeMar DeRozan or a Vucevic or a Kobe yeah. White, you know, come the deadline, that value might, even if they haven't played yeah. for it, that value might be higher. Yeah. So um, Chicago definitely – uh, I think definitely will be there. I don't even think that's a maybe. I think they're 100% going to be there. Um, next on the list is the Clippers. Um, the Clippers were the team. I mean, when Kawhi and Paul George got there and what was it, 2019, everyone was like, yeah. they're going to be oh, the best team in the good. league. Yeah. yeah. And injuries, blown leads, it has just never worked for the Clippers. Um, you know, if you're a Clippers fan, this is like nothing short of like – just this always happens to you guys. Yeah. I feel horrible. <laughs> like, yeah. You guys could just never get over that hump. But um, yeah, I, I think they're like both Kawhi and Paul George are on two years or less left on their contracts. Um, what do you think the Clippers, you know, kind of potential over the next couple of years could be? I mean, if it's just, if it's just a big, if like, I, I, I don't see it. I never, I, I'm, I'm done. I don't have faith in them anymore at this point. Yeah. I did the last few years, but, 
Like last year on, I I, I said I, I these guys these guys aren't healthy. It's not their fault. It's their body giving up on them. I feel bad for them, but yeah, that's how it is. You gotta accept that it's reality. Their whole team, they have a very solid team. Obviously, they have great depth and such, but it's yeah. it's just never gonna work out. So I I could see them being in the mix for this. I think trying to capitalize on getting some assets, but then again, I don't even think they own their pick. I believe it belongs to OKC this year. So in the yeah, draft. and that was the Shea trade, correct? Yeah. So that that might come back to bite them a bit more in the upcoming mm. future, but we'll see on that. I, I don't. I'm not a big Clipper guy anymore. I have to pass. Yeah, it. yeah. It's it's also weird because again, it's one of those things where it's like, as we've said every year, it's like it's the big if. It's yeah. like even right now, if you could get sixty five, like sixty to sixty five games out of Kawhi and Paul George, oh. they are a contender. Oh yeah. But oh, yeah, like <laughs> it, it's that yeah. if has become yeah. so infamous in the league because it's like it just doesn't you know it's the biggest it has never league worked league, man. exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then last we've got the Raptors. Now yeah. the Raptors have kind of been in a floating situation the last few seasons post Kawhi. Yeah. Um, originally it was like okay, this is Pascal's team. We're gonna build around him. Um. They've made it Pascal's team, but they haven't really built around him. Yeah. Um, pretty much the same core outside of Van Fleet leaving. Um, they did bring in Gary Trent Jr., who's been solid, I guess. He's like pretty much just a replacement Powell. Nothing yeah. really crazy there. Pretty much. You, know, yeah. you lost Kyle Lowry, but he was already aging, so is what it is. Um, Scotty Barnes, great rookie season, down sophomore year. That's yeah. to be expected. That always happens. So, yeah, potential big year coming from Scotty. We'll see. But uh, what do you think the Raptors' future looks like? Yeah, so I keep seeing this, the Pascal trade rumors, and I, I, he doesn't want to get traded, I, I saw, or something like that. He, like, wants hmm. to stay. But I, I saw the Hawks are a big team that really want him as of right now. Interesting. OG, I've seen plenty of teams. Oh, yeah. He's a, he, like you've mentioned, he's been in the rumor mill for the last two years. It's, I don't know. I don't know what if they expect too much out of their players, or I don't know why they've never moved on. Because I, I was kind of confused why they didn't move on from Fred at the deadline last year, seeing he was a free agent. I, I Man. understand. I didn't understand bringing in Jakob Pertl when he's a free agent at season's end. I, there's a lot of moves they make at times that kind of boggle my head a little bit because in, I, in the past, Masai's made great moves and. I've yeah. never questioned them, but the last few years have kind of scratched my head a bit by them not, I guess, capitalizing on situations that like a lot of free agent, it, it just, it doesn't make sense to me as of right now. Cause I think Gary Trent comes season in as a free agent. I think OG is a free agent after this year also. Yeah, I and think you're right. Pascal is also a free agent at the end. He of the will year. be. So I think yeah. you have to, you have to start calling people and start trying to get these guys out of there. It almost related to baseball. You're talking a lot about baseball before they start, but it's related to me. It almost feels like the Giants after the Triple Crown. It's like they just didn't get rid of the core. They just kept yeah. them and kept they them and kept, kept them. And they, they waited too long on them. Yeah, and they kept trying to, like, buy at the deadline and try and get one more. It's like, Never I don't think it's not – I don't think they're the guys anymore. Hey, maybe you know? they their 2020 season or something. I don't know. Or their yeah. season. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know – like I think the Warriors last uh, in 2022, you know, like they just everything clicked at the right time. You yeah. know, you hate to see it, but injuries helped them out tremendously across the league. You know, yeah. they just ran into a lot of luck. I don't think the Raptors are in a place where you're going to see much luck because like we've talked about, the parity around the league is just so much better than it's, than it's ever oh. been where, you know, I mean, it an unimaginable amount of stuff would have to go right for them. Uh, yeah. to see them get back to 2019 form to move on from there in season tournament. Um, we're just going to briefly go over the Western group C specifically the schedule for the thunder and then for the warriors. Um, just because like, you know, then you kind of have to talk about all 30 and yeah, it's a that's lot. just, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's like, we're not going to just get into a, you know, a uh, whole thing about scheduling, but um, starting off with the Thunder game one, uh, what is it? November 3rd on a Friday at the, or at home, uh, OKC is going to be playing the Warriors. Um, I'm still. So it's not a big, huh? 
No, it, it starts in, uh, I think the championship is in Vegas. You're right. You're right. You're hundred percent right. Cause that's the yeah. qualifiers, right. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. still so weird to me that they're starting this November third, like a week like into a the week? season. Yeah. yeah. A week in like a two days. Even yeah. <laughs> so game one versus the Warriors for OKC game two, the Thunder are in Sacramento. Ooh, uh, you guys okay. will be playing the Kings. Ooh. What do you think about that, man? The Kings are a great Ooh, team. The Kings freaking kicked the Thunder's ass last year. <laughs> it was bad, man. They just outscored them every game. I, I hope the the younger guys can take note from that. But the Warriors also, I think it was the, se- the season series was 3-1. The Warriors beat the Thunder three times. The mm. only game the Thunder won, I believe Curry wasn't even playing. <laughs> Because there's yeah. a game that Curry was playing, and I believe he had like 40, and it was uh, an ugly night. Uh, yeah, every game, I just every game that the Warriors played on the road, I just like, I think they lost that I, one. <laughs> it yeah, was like I everyone, I'm like, they had to have lost. I do remember that. That was an issue. Yeah. Uh, then after Sacramento, uh, so the Sacramento game is on November 10th, so a week separation before game two. Yeah. Uh, the next game, November 14th on a Tuesday, you guys are at home playing the Spurs. So when Binyama day, um, hopefully, right. hopefully everybody's healthy. Right. Um, that'll be an interesting game. Um, right. Chet versus Wemby. This yeah, is like Wemby. the matchup people are looking at, you know, yeah. for, you know, just craziness. Um, I'm interested. I'm just, I'm really intrigued by the Spurs. And yeah. I, I want to watch a lot of Spurs games this season and just, you know, see what's going on there. Yeah. Um, following that, uh, and this will be the last of the uh, initial group play schedule. You guys get two weeks off and then you play Minnesota in Minnesota. Okay. So versus Edwards versus cat go bear that whole. Yeah. Play it. Play it. <laughs> yeah. Playing uh rematch playing. Tournament. Right, right, right. Yeah, knock the thunder out. yeah. What do you, what do you think about that matchup? I mean, this time you guys have chat, so. You yeah, know. I'm, I'm. That's was the main issue that whole game is just the big men were just punking the thunder the whole game. It was too small. They ran Jalen Williams the whole game at center, which yeah, I'm yeah. Just, he's like six nine, and then you got Rudy and Cat just banging in the paint. And Cat wants to go post up in the paint the whole game actually for once, and yeah, it was a. It's not a very good game. It was a beat down. So I mean, it's glad to have glad to see we actually have a big man to combat that. But we'll have to see how it goes this time. And who did you guys draft again? I know you traded Derek Lively. Who did you? Well, we drafted Case Walls. With Case Walls, right, right, right. Okay. Uh, and he's the guard, right? He's a guard. Okay. Uh, Ducky. Okay. Uh, and then for the Warriors, like we said, starting off November third in OKC against the Thunder. Yeah, yeah that's going to be a fun matchup. It always is. Yeah. Again, all I'm, and that's kind of, I guess, it's like a homecoming in a way for Chris Paul. You know, he did a yep. lot of good for you guys. So yeah, it'll be fun there. Um, plus Dario Sarach too, you know, fan yep. favorite. Everybody loves Sarach. Oh, my <laughs> uh November 14th, the Warriors play the Timberwolves. So we right. get our taste of, you know, the Go Bear Cat madness and you know, uh hopefully improved Anthony Edwards. Yep. Um then on the 24th, we play the Spurs. Uh, okay. so our first game I'm imagining versus Wembenyama, probably not. There'll probably be some more in-season stuff against them, but potentially. And then on the 28th, we get the Kings in okay. Sacramento, and that's going to be the fun one. Oh, they're fire. Um, yeah. Yeah. There is going to be, um, the Kings games this year are going to be like be hype, Lakers man. Celtics games. Yeah, literally they're high scoring. I, I have a, oh, every Kings game is high scoring, but yeah, but I, I think, play, yeah. Man. The Kings are going to want revenge. Oh, yeah. So they're going to come and try to punch this team in the mouth. And I think for the Warriors, this is, again, like a prove it that we're still a top in the West. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, or at least we're still better than the Kings in the yeah, West. No, so <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be a fun matchup. I'm excited for all those games. But, yeah, group play schedule West C. Uh, that's not all the teams, but this is the group C of the Western Conference. Uh, and these are just the qualifiers. So after that, obviously, when it branches out further from who wins and who loses, yeah, uh, we'll get into that. But that'll happen as the tournament goes. Uh, and I will also link that in the description as well if you guys want to go check a look, uh, take a look at those schedules and where the games will be on the TV. Uh, moving on from there, 
Uh, this is where we get into FIBA and what we kind of close the video out on. Starting off, Jamal Murray uh, is officially out for Team Canada. Uh, nothing injury related, just he wants to prep for the season. Understandable. You know, that was his first year back last year off coming off the ACL. So um, I imagine he just wants to get a full a full off season in uh, no like, you know, no. Uh, what do you call it? Rehab. Yeah, no rehab, just a full off season. And I don't think he wants to put too much pressure on his body. Um, just wants to take it easy. So no Jamal Murray. Um, this seems to be like a running theme for Team Canada, just kind of yeah. losing guys left and right who don't want to play, I guess, who did, yeah. but don't. Um, and because of that, Canada, I know we were going to go Greece first, but I guess because we talked about Jamal Murray, we'll go uh, Canada first. Um, Canada lost, I think this is their first loss, to the Dominican Republic. Yeah. Um, losing 94 to 88 or 88 to 94. Uh, in all fairness, Canada's starters only played a few minutes yeah. in the first half. Uh, and then that was that, but, um, you know, what are your thoughts about it? I mean, we kind of, I guess, kind of clowned on Dominican Republic when yeah, they got smoked out by bit. the Warriors. But. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean, that's good to see that. Cause I actually saw a bunch of people in the comments saying that, Oh, that Canada is not beating team USA like this, but like you mentioned, they barely had anyone playing the whole game. The starters barely played. So I, I don't know. You put, you take it with the, I, I guess just take it with the grain of salt. Grain yeah. of salt. I mean, it's not, it doesn't, it's not definitely not a dictator and anything. It doesn't dictate no. anything for future reference, I would say, but yeah, I'm glad to see Dominican Republic one. I saw cat had a pretty solid game for the most mm, part. That's cool. It's pretty good to see, but I, I mean, team, yeah, Dominicans, I wouldn't say they're a bad team. They definitely have a few, NBA players on the roster. So it's not like a, a laughable team that they lost to, but yeah. It, yeah, yeah. Like you mentioned, they 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 didn't they didn't play their they didn't play their starters, man. I mean, it yeah. might be a different ball game if they do. So we'll have to wait and see <laughs> see uh, like you mentioned, it's we're only like a four days, five days out, huh? Yeah, but it officially started. Yeah, so yeah, uh, I think we'll have to judge Canada by then. Cause I, I don't think that's a very fair way to judge them as of right now, but USA still looks like the best. I'm just saying. Yeah, they're just uh, such a deep team. Fuck. Yeah. Every game, it's like, man, these guys are getting beat. They're yeah. like, their opponents are playing well, and then it's like, the U.S. just like snaps out of it for one yeah. minute, and it's like, oh, and they've got the lead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? it's like, oh my god, I don't know why they play like that sometimes. Yeah. Uh, moving on from there, the U.S. beats Greece, one hundred eight to eighty six. Yeah. Uh, to preface that, we talked about last week or the week before, Giannis with the knee injury, unfortunately is going to be out for the remainder of FIBA. Uh, So Greece is, you know, quite a leg down in terms of talent. Um, (laughs) They're still a solid group. I don't think they're that bad. I don't think they're like as bad as the Dominican Republic, but uh, not that DR is like bad. You know, I got to be nice here. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Greece looks pretty solid, but yeah, the U S just kind of, you know, and, and we'll get into that on the next game. They just had those few moments, man, where it just, it all clicked. And yeah. once it clicked, there is no stopping them. Big time. Like, you know, the, those runs that go on, I was saying before we started, like, it, it really is Steve Kerr Warriors. Like, you know, like you could tell there's an influence there. Like those third quarters, man, are, you know, <laughs> sons of bitches. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, you know, you're a Thunder fan, man. You've seen the, you know, in the oh, yeah. Warriors prime, you've seen that plenty of times. Like it ain't fun. Man, those third quarters. Yeah. So, you know, it's <laughs> fun to watch. I, I didn't get to see this U S Greece to uh, Greece game. I think you said you missed it as well, but yeah, you both did watch the highlights. The highlights were pretty fun. Um, again, not having Giannis kind of takes away a little bit from it, but um, still a fun game. What were your thoughts from it? I mean, like you mentioned, I didn't watch too much of it, but it, it like you said, it, it definitely is a step down without Giannis. I mean, I, I'm guessing who is who would be their best player if it's not for Giannis. I think they were saying Papa Giannis. Papa Giannis, or, oh, George's Papa Giannis, whatever his name is. Yeah, him or I think there might have been a second uh, on the team, but it might have been him. Probably, uh, yeah, probably Papa Giannis. Thinking about it now. Yeah, yeah, th- that's usually an okay team, but yeah, it's just without Giannis, man, I, it's not a very fair game. Yeah, 
And yeah, no one's gotten hurt for the U.S., which is a good thing. It's a great thing, um, yeah. But everybody else seems to be getting yeah. like, big injuries and stuff I, and missing key players. I know his was like just to clean it up before the season starts. So I, yeah. I understand that. Yeah, no, it's, you know, even though I think a lot of these guys, especially, you know, when they're not from the U.S., like play being able to play for their home country oh, yeah, is like way more meaningful yeah. than the U.S. dudes. But, oh, yeah. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they're still NBA players. So, you know, you got to prioritize that first. Um, but uh, which, man, that, you know, going back to the 90s, you know, boy, they they took this shit seriously. Yeah, they did. Like, it was a real honor to play for this team. But nowadays, it's like, do I got time? I don't know. Yeah, I'd rather go play yeah. 2K. You know? Yeah, whatever, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah. To wrap things up here, we've got the USA versus Germany that happened this morning slash into the afternoon. Um, I think this is the final game of the U.S. showcase. Not positive. There may be one more. Um, we are very close to the actual tournament beginning, but this is kind of just the, you know, intro to things. Uh, so U.S. versus Germany. This was an incredible game. Uh, an incredible one. Germany looked good. This is the best team I think they've faced. And Spain looked really good. Yeah. But I think this team, this Germany team, man, they really pose some problems uh, for the U.S. And the hustle and the heart they played with, I really respect. Um, they outworked the U.S. the majority of the game. And, you know, like we said, I think it's pretty clear, you know, we've talked about Canada having a great roster, but with a few guys leaving, um, I think at this point, the U.S. just has the best roster up and down of any team in this uh, in FIBA. But Germany looked great. They led, I think, the entire game up until midway through the third quarter where the U.S. went on a run. Um, and then they, like, they were still up, but it was a lot closer. And then in the fourth quarter, the U.S. just took over um, and, and ended up winning. Uh, I don't remember the final score. uh you said you were looking up the stats, um, which I we could get into afterwards, but uh, I'm sure the final score will be there as well. I should have written that down. I did not. Um, I have it. It, is, it was 99 to 91. 99 to 91. Okay. Um, to close out the third quarter, like we were talking about, with, you know, the whole Steve Kerr situation, uh, closing out the third quarter, the U.S. went on a 20 to 6 run led by Tyrese Halliburton, who I think had 12 in that span. He was incredible in the late third quarter, um, three after three after three transition layup um, assists just everywhere, everywhere on the offensive end. And this is Tyrese Halliburton. Like that dude was incredible last season. And we really saw him become one of the premier point guards in this league. Um, and I was telling Dominic, I do believe at this point, He's like, we were talking, you know, talking up a big game about Jalen Brunson, who is still a fantastic player. But like, I think this, this is one of those things where it's like, I'm taking Tyrese. I really am. I think Tyrese is a, a far better playmaker, but also like just the score. Like he's a, he's a great scorer. It's ugly. It's, it's an ugly jumper. It's, he's got a very odd style, but Damn it, it works, <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and he helped lead the way to uh to, to go on that run. Uh, but like I said, Germany, so much uh just doing all the little stuff, you know. Uh the US for a lot of these games, the turnovers at times get a little little out of control. The defense can be suspect, leaving a lot of guys wide open. Uh the rebounding can kind of get away from them. And Germany just capitalized on all that. Yeah. outworked on the glass, outworked on the loose balls, read the passing lanes well, played the passing lanes better, just did all the little stuff. And I was thoroughly impressed with them. You know, what, what were some takeaways uh, from the German side of things for you? Yeah, so as I see immediately from the stat sheet, the rebound differential, 55 to USA is 42. So plus 13 on the rebounds, that's pretty big. That's a pretty big margin right there. Yeah. I do see the USA shooting a 44% clip from behind the arc compared to Germany's 29%. So that's something that that makes sense. The USA, this team shoots the ball very well. Almost they had the right personnel, I'll say, shooting the ball. 
Which is interesting, too, because I'm pretty sure the U.S. was just ice cold in the first half. And the German side of things, they were striping it. So I think it was that those two runs where the U.S. just could not miss from three that probably got them there. Um, And then Germany was just breaking everything in the second half. But yeah, yeah, Germany looked great. Um, Then in the fourth quarter, after tying things up briefly, um, they held the game, I think, 86 apiece until like the four or five minute mark. And the U.S. closed the game on a 22 to three run. Yeah, uh, that one being led by Anthony Edwards. Um, just, I mean, like they just fed him and got out of the way, let him yeah. do his thing. Uh, and, and he was making things happen. Uh, Austin Reeves had a lot of moments early in the fourth quarter, midway through the third quarter, um, just getting downhill. Dude, he crossed up like three or four guys. I was like, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? <laughs> um, Reeves has been very impressive. But uh, as far as player of the game, goes uh and we haven't done this for any of the other games but this one i think actually had a player of the game because like we said before the u.s has been so spread out with yeah. their scoring with yeah, impact and everything you know so much compared to the others yeah um for the german side of things daniel tice was incredible unbelievable he yeah. was so good um we've talked about i think briefly on here um that tice has kind of passed his prime and, you know, there's probably not much value there, but could be, a, you know, a vet some team picks up. Um, he's still sitting in Indy, hasn't done much there, kind of just chilling. They don't really have a role for him. Makes yeah. sense. They're a young team. Um, but this was a game where I think, you know, I think I talked about before, Daniel Tice is a guy I'd love the Warriors to check out. This dude, like, that's prototypical Warrior center. Just yeah. he does everything the Warriors want. Um I think that's it. like Steve Kerr is probably ecstatic seeing that like, Oh, thank God. Okay. We're going to keep an eye on him throughout the season. Um, but we've talked about trade piece, you know, potential, potential trade or trade value. And I think Daniel Tice completely raised his uh, U S side of things. Anthony Edwards dropping 34. Uh, yeah. You've been high on Ant. What did you see there? Man, like I mentioned, I didn't get to watch this one just yet because it was on a time. I didn't get it, but I, I'm not really surprised. And I'm, I'm glad to see Steve Kerr after the game said he's obviously the man. He's the he's the guy of the team. I mean, it, it, he's the alpha dog. It is. I, yeah. I expect it out of him. He's and this is really fun to see him play this way. And I'm ready yeah. to see him for the season, too. I'm ready to see him finish his feet out, obviously, because I think he's going to keep going on a spectacular run. But mm. this is fun to see him develop. Because he's still very young. He's still only 21, I believe. Yeah, 21, so 22. He, yeah. He's still very young. So this is very fun to see going into the season. Yeah, no. you, And he's just so skilled. Like, it, it's kind of funny how much, like, yeah. it was kind of, yeah, okay, he's a great athlete. The jump yeah. shot's going to need a ton of work. And then yeah. he came in the league and it's like, I guess not. <laughs> yeah, know? the jump shot is uh, not bad whatsoever. No, he, I mean, he could get, we, we kind of talked a little bit too, like he could get a little shot heavy. Yeah. Um, oh, he's not a, I wouldn't say he's a ball hog, like in season. Yeah. He makes the right play a lot of the time. Um, but so far, just like Steve Kerr said, he's the man of the team. They're kind of yeah. letting him run hog wild out there. And I'm cool with it, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah if it's getting us getting them that. <laughs> yeah, no. Something interesting I just remembered. Uh, someone in I have a basketball group chat, and someone in there was talking about Brandon Ingram seems to be kind of losing a lot of runtime, which I think is interesting because I I yeah. agree. Yeah. Um, I don't think Ingram's played poorly, but Steve Kerr is a hot hand kind of guy. He'll go with yeah. the guy who's scoring, so. I feel like Ingram's kind of just getting like, it's like, sorry, dude, you know, we're going to give the guy who's earned it the minutes. And yeah. uh, that's the tough thing. Cause you said the U S has such a stacked roster. It's like any guy sitting on the bench, you're kind of like, man, he should be getting some playing time. Why is it again? It's like, dude, cause he's got him ahead of him. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, pretty crazy game. Couple huge runs. Uh, are there any other thoughts you had from that? Uh, again, I know you said you missed it, um, or only what we're able to catch it the second half. But uh, if there's anything else uh, you saw, I mean, like I like I've mentioned before, man, I'm really impressed with Reeves, man. Mm-hmm. He has been killing this whole tournament. He's been killing it. 
I just I, I I've always been like I've I've always acknowledged him as a very good solid player, but he he's he's coming into his own, man. He's very special. Yeah. It just every time it's like, man, dude, the Lakers just with that scouting department. Dude, oh that my Christ. Contract too, man. Yeah, steal, utter yeah. steal. And it's crazy that again, we've talked about it countless times. It's so redundant, but it's like it's crazy to think that that's a steal. That's yeah. a contract that's like production to yeah. money. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. But the league's so fucked. We were both like, yeah. he's probably gonna get a hundred mil. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, it's awesome to see a dude play what he's worth, get paid what he's worth, and everything keep going smoothly. And he just keeps keeps on improving. And yeah. you know, I, it's hilarious that this dude is like becoming an NBA fan favorite. It almost feels yeah. like the whole Caruso thing. Like I remember twenty twenty, every yeah. NBA fan loved Alex Caruso. Yeah. Um. So it, you know, it's cool to see that you know th- there's a spark like that again, and it's just another you know solid role player yeah um so yeah um you know could be another game uh for the usa showcase i'll you know i'll be trying to if it's at an ungodly hour i might have to watch yeah. the replay or the it's highlights like, but yeah yeah like, this one i missed because i was asleep for some of it i woke up and i couldn't find the channel yeah i barely woke up right when it started it was like <laughs> a, a minute or two in when i got in so yeah, uh, hopefully the other games are at more reasonable times, but they do run the replay. So if there is, I'll be watching it. Yeah. But um, yeah, the actual tournament begins relatively soon in like a week. So yeah, five uh, days. Yeah, five days. We'll be keeping up with that uh, as much as possible. And yeah, that uh, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. There's nothing really else uh, to go with. So yeah, uh, James Harden, Cooper Flag in-season tourney jamal murray and fiba that's pretty it's pretty much all we've got for you today uh yeah. if anything crazy goes on in the next couple days we'll you know uh quickly cool. get in here yeah. add a little to this and get out again but yeah uh, slow off season but yeah this james Harden stuff is pretty crazy to see yeah so yeah, that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you all for uh for for watching. Thank you, Dominic, again for coming on. Uh, again, as always, in the moment hoops in the description, ton of content they're putting out. Uh, I'll be linking a couple of the stuff that we talked about in this video in the description as well. So you guys will be able to kind of you know like it's a you know color by number. Keep up with us, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna do it. If you like the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Do the same for Dominic's channel. And uh, we will catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you all and peace.